It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. I'm your host, as always, Austin Peterson, here with my co-host, Landon Mance. And we are excited to have today on the show, Je- Janae Marie, almost, I almost got it wrong there, it took me a second, uh, Janae Marie with Janae Cosmetics uh, coming to us from Denver, Colorado. Janae, we're, great, we're, we're happy to have you here today. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Happy to be on here today. Yeah, I've got to tell you, we we've been it, we haven't been doing this show a, a really really long time, but it's been you know all through COVID, and uh, your name is the most difficult that we've had to pronounce thus far. So <laughs> I, I got a little tongue tied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the sad thing is, I speak fluent French, and so you would think that it would come easy, but uh, it's just <laughs> no, no worries. You're not the first to say that. Yeah, growing up, I actually used to be super insecure about the name because it was so unique, but then I learned to love it and created a brand out of it. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, you know, you were actually introduced to us by a former guest that we had on the program, Scott Buss, and so we're, we're grateful yeah. that he introduced you. Scott. And Yeah, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to uh, learning a little bit more uh, about you and about the business that you're building and the brand that you're building. And I, I got to tell you, Landon's used to being the, the most beautiful person on these on these webcasts. <laughs> but I, I think you've got him beat. So, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> but, you. <laughs> but he is definitely looking forward to some information on the cosmetics because I know he still wears makeup. I gave it up in the 90s, but. Oh, OK. <laughs> I do. I, love it. I, I do. And I had to uh, I had to write your name down because for some reason, looking at your name on paper, I associated it with this pronunciation, which was so incredibly <laughs> far off that so I literally variations. had to write it down and say, you know, pronounce pronounced this way. So um, if I'm looking down at my sheet, my cheat sheet, it's so I, I don't uh, mispronounce your name. But also a, a quick side note for you. So a name that I get called about probably two to three times a week is Lance. So people take Landon and Mance and blend it together and I get, I get Lance. So I am uh, very familiar with uh, getting called the wrong name and all that comes along with that. So ho- hopefully we'll, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we won't butcher it. <laughs> no worries. You know, you're not the first to do that. You're certainly not going to be the last. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we will do our best to pronounce it correctly throughout the rest of the program. But um, one of the things that we that we typically do with our guests is have them tell a little bit about themselves personally before we jump into the business side. So if you don't mind giving us some background on you, maybe your family life, where you grew up, any of that sort of uh, information, and then kind of have that lead into to how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm a Colorado native. I actually grew up in the mountains at a small town called Westcliff. I had a super fun upbringing. Um, I was actually a tomboy growing up. Um, I always played in the mud. I worked at um, different farms, like alpaca piece farms. Was super. I love animals. My parents always thought I was going to do something um, for a living that incorporated animals. Um, I'd always go bird, dirt biking, hiking. I had a tree house in my backyard, lots of land. Uh, super fun. Um, and then I moved to Arvada uh, when I was in fifth grade. And then I've been in Denver ever since. Um, but yeah, I've always had a passion for the fashion and beauty industry. Um, I'd say growing up, I didn't really have access to it as much living in the mountains. But then when I moved um, to the city, I was inspired. I would see people with great fashion or beauty. And I always loved lip gloss. I was always obsessed with lip gloss. And I would always put it on. And I mean, I'm still obsessed with lip gloss. <laughs> and um, that's why I started 
um, a cosmetic line out of it. I grew up in a entrepreneurship family, uh, very hardworking people, uh, which is an inspiration for sure. And so I wanted to start my own uh, business with something that I'm passionate about and harmonize all my passions through my company. So I started with a launch of a lip gloss collection and I'm expanding from there. All right. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you, I actually lived in Arvada for a year when I was in junior high school, oh, wow. which I'm guessing is about 30 years before you went to junior <laughs> high school in, in Arvada. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, a cool, it's a beautiful town. I love it. Yeah. It was a cool little town. We didn't live there that long. My dad was actually working at Stapleton airport back in the day okay. uh, before DIA, I guess, came in and um, it, it, didn't end up being the job that he thought it was going to be. And so we, we moved back to the state of Utah where I grew up most of my life, but uh, yeah, we, we loved Colorado and I spend a fair amount of, of time in Colorado now um, professionally. And then I've got a lot of friends who live there and yeah. growing up in the mountains is something I'm familiar with growing up in Utah. I grew up as a snowboarder and Landon and I both rode dirt bikes our whole lives growing up. And so we're, yeah, same growing up. <laughs> we're, we're on the same page there. I actually, yeah, amateur race motocross uh, on dirt bikes and so it's uh it's a great passion of mine yeah, yeah it's fun for sure i mean i'm i'm still adventurous you know as long as i'm having a good time i'm always i'm an adrenaline junkie like i love to have fun <laughs> love yeah. sometimes i'll go on a run like just because i need to do something <laughs> yeah well that that's actually the title my mom gave me in junior high school was adrenaline junkie and it's stuck ever <laughs> since but yeah if if there's yeah. anything that'll get my adrenaline going I'm I'm interested. Oh absolutely same here. Like I've been skydiving before I really want to go again. <laughs> yep, yeah me too and we do we go line. Yeah, we go frequently to the I fly the indoor skydiving. Um Oh, I haven't done indoor skydiving yet. A little scared for that, but <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's actually pretty fun. It's, it's really cool. I, I, you know, I've got a son that's 20 years old um, and he didn't really like it, but I guess it's because he, he ended up kind of holding his breath the whole time, but my, oh, my 17 year old daughter loves it. So, okay. I'll have to give it a try sometime. One of my uh, close friends went not too long ago and she liked it. So, yeah. Well, very I just want cool. to make sure I, I, I heard that correctly. So you're not scared to jump out of an airplane at 10 or 20,000 square coming. Uh, uh, feet, but you're scared to get in a little <laughs> vacuum, a bounce house vacuum and uh, yeah. fly up in the air 20 feet above the ground. Did I hear that right? Yes, you did. I had a feeling you were going to call me out on that. <laughs> um, Got you. Bungee jumping kind of frightens me a little bit as well. One of these days I'll probably end up doing it, but I think it's a more so matter of just, I don't know, I don't know. It just seems unsafe in a way. I don't know, like jerking your back in weird directions. I don't know. It just, I'll, I'll probably give it a try one of these days. days yeah, I, I've never done that. So I, I can't speak to that. <laughs> but um, so Janae, um, you know, we always send out a, a guest intake form prior to our conversations because yeah. we want to give our guests an opportunity to talk about the things that are important to them and that they want to talk about. And what I thought was really cool and unique about your intake form is that um, we're going to talk a lot about um, mindset and inspiration, um, habits, and, and just a lot of this kind yeah. of um, more, you know, qualitative stuff around business. So I'm super excited to, to dive into that with you. But before we do that, um, talk to us a little bit about your, a little bit more about your, your journey of uh, discovering this, um, discovering this, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, passion. Passion, yeah. Discovering this passion for, for cosmetics and then actually turning that, you know, into a business and kind of tell us, walk us through that journey and talk to us about the the formation of your business and maybe some of the, you know, the challenges and stuff that you've kind of faced doing that. Well, yeah, absolutely. I'd say I've always found the cosmetic field uh, fascinating and same, just the fashion and beauty industry in general. I've always wanted to get more involved and um, I'm super excited to start my company with it, or I already started my company, but to grow my company with it because there are so many 
opportunities that it could lead to and so many different products that could be launched, different formulas, um, different industries um, that I can find and sell it to people. And I want people to find it valuable and feel confident in my products. And I feel my new collections that I'm launching um, with COVID, I feel like a lot of people have had a hard time and I feel affirmations are so important. And so each collection name is and product names are affirmations. So for example, uh, Gratia, um, so they're all Latin names, the collections, and that means gratitude. So, and then the, the product names are be you, like be yourself, um, be who you are, conquer, fearless, kind of just like affirmations and just starting your day in the right mindset. If you're getting ready, oh, I'm going to wear conquer lipstick today. I'm going to conquer whatever meeting I have today, or that's kind of the brand message I have behind it. <laughs> Yeah, that's very cool. I love that. So that's a perfect segue into kind of what we wanted to talk about next, which is talk to us a little bit about the the importance of mindset and, and self care and kind of how that that ties into what you're into what you're doing. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think mindset is key. And um, I, I know what I found great success, like I really feel manifesting is huge. And starting your day off with an intention, maybe a five minute meditation and affirmations and just set your intention for the day and um, just like, what are your goals? And I know people who do vision boards and I feel like I have a great um, network of people, whether it's advisors, mentors, and they do the same. And it's just, your goals can never be too large. Just keep going after what you want in life. And I think that's important. Yeah. Are there maybe one or two goals that you've kind of set for yourself that you, that you can share with us? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I want to get my products into distribution and I'll be doing that soon. I'm hoping early 2021, February ish. And, um, I just love building uh, my network and just monetizing my relations, my connections and just meeting great people. I feel like I have a great, great people in my life and I really value strong relationships and connections with people that inspire me that I can inspire that we empower each other and feed off each other and support one another so that's my goal is to just keep building my relations and grow from there yeah cool I think you know you you mentioned it a little bit you know, during COVID it's been a little bit difficult to make connections right and we also yeah. know that there's been issues with um maybe self-care is not the, the, the way to put it, but you know, the, the isolationism and the, you know, everything, everybody kind of gets in their own head when they can't go out and see people, they can't go out and network face to face. And so yeah. you know, what have, what have you done specifically to, to continue to build this brand and, and, you know, kind of get to where you want to be, you know, I, I I hate to use this terminology because I think sometimes it's it's received, you know, in a negative fashion and that's not the way that I mean it, but this kind of female empowerment that your your message seems to be about, right? Um, and 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 it's not really about the cosmetics as much from what I get from you is it's really about helping females to feel empowered and to go out and yeah. do whatever they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So what um, specifically? So what was your question? You, yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> no, okay. I, I, I followed up with a lot of information afterwards. So okay. what specifically have you done during COVID to continue to build okay. your network and get your brand ready to, to go out to distribution? Yeah, absolutely. Well, COVID actually taught me how much of a homebody I really am. Um, I'd say every day I set, like when I set my intention for the day, as long as I'm doing baby steps or doing some sort of growth every day to get where I want to be, um, whether it's just an at-home workout or whether it's a couple of Zoom calls, whether it's sending out emails, my LinkedIn. Um, I've been told by my business consultant to start using my LinkedIn more, so I'm doing that now. Um, and I'd say just really monetizing your relations and your connections. Like I'll send introductory emails, I'll connect people, and same with other people connecting me. Um, and yeah, just really making those phone calls and emails, just kind of growing from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that we, you know, we have to step up our game. I think a lot of, 
younger entrepreneurs believe that social media and Instagram following and, and Snapchat or TikTok or whatever it ends up being is, is enough. And sometimes it is, but the, the principles themselves of business still apply, even though we're, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're still more in the social media or we're in the social media world more than we used to be. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, just, to, it's good to be well-rounded. Like you can't just solely put all your eggs in one basket and just rely on social media. I mean, there's digital marketing, it's your connections, it's your emails, those Zoom calls, it's who you associate with. Um, you're the five people you hang out with in, or the five people you associate yourself with most. So I think it's important to be very mindful of who you spend your time and attention with. And I just, I, I've really been taking that into consideration lately, <laughs> more so. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that's a good point that we all can all be better at, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So you've mentioned a couple of, of, of passions at this point, but uh, you know, what, what truly would you say are your, are your passions and how do you incorporate those into your business day to day? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm passionate passionate about the fashion beauty industry, obviously with my company. Um, I love the travel. I love fitness and health as well. And so I'm excited to go when things are back to, I wouldn't say normal, but to an extent, I love trade shows, um, having my own booth with my cosmetic line. I love traveling, experiencing new cultures. And um, I love fitness as well. So uh, working out is fun for me, exercise and just health and nutrition, just all that. And I harmonize it all together. Um, I'd say I'm a very spiritual person as well. And my family and friends, super important to me. And yeah, so I feel when I travel with uh, my company, whether it's a business opportunity or an event or uh, it's exciting because when I can do it for work. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, one of our one of our previous guests on the show, uh, Janae, was actually uh, my my sister Dana, and okay. she she owns a really successful women's clothing boutique based out of Southern California. Awesome. Um, I'll and, have to check it out. Uh, what's that? I'll I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's called Prism Prism Boutique, and I think that would be a good uh, connection, you know, for you. Uh, just on a, Absolutely. on a couple different levels I, I think you guys would, would, would hit it off just kind of as people and as friends, but also as business women and, and maybe, uh, you know, some kind of a relationship that you guys can form there. That's, you know, that's mutually beneficial, but, uh, that's how you know that you have a good producer is when she types into the chat, you know, good little nuggets like that. So props to, uh, Karen for that. So thank you. Yeah, um, I love it. I, w- I would absolutely love to connect with her. So I'm yeah, after the it. show, just uh, please uh, remind me and I'll, I'll uh, introduce you guys through email. Of course. I would love um, that. So you you have um, mentioned a term, um, monetizing network and relationships. Yeah. And every time you say that, a little bell dings in my head because uh, <laughs> Scott has said that a couple of times. I know he's so, great. I love Scott. <laughs> he is. He is. He is great. Um, so talk to us about that. What what is that what does that mean to you and how are you specifically doing that with your connections? I just think it's important to empower and inspire and to be inspired. So if you have a new connection or you're just meeting someone for the first time, um, how can you help them? How can you bring value to them? And how, how can you help each other? I think at the end of the day, when you're adding value to other people and empowering each other, I think that's important. And that's what I value. And I try to make it a priority for me in my life with the people I talk to or whether it's a friend, business, just whoever I encounter. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to press you a little bit here for a second. Okay. So <laughs> give us, give us an example of that, would you? Because I, I love that. I love that, that, the, you know, the, the thought process behind that. But if, you know, you were meeting, I don't know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know, if you're meeting Austin and I for the first time, or maybe you're meeting my sister for the first time or something, you know, how do you, how do you do what you just described? Or does it really just have to be something kind of in the moment? Um, it kind of just depends. Every relationship is unique. And 
um, if I find I can benefit you maybe by bringing a guest onto your show or um, posting you on social media, um, exposure, um, I mean, I'm flexible. It just kind of depends on what what I can, what I feel I can add value to. And, gotcha. So just kind of like yeah. what, what makes sense for the person's kind of unique yeah, absolutely. circumstance. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, so you've, you've thrown around the word inspiration a lot. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, who inspires you and where does your inspiration come from? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say I have a great, great people in my life. Um, whether it's a mentor, advisors, fa close family, friends. Um, I'd say people who are ambitious, driven, generous, have good intentions. Um, th that inspires me. Um, my uncle, Noe, he really inspires me. He's such a great person and um, very helpful. Like I always go to him like random questions about life or whatever. And he always has the best input for it. And I'd say, do you know who Ashley Graham is? Yes, I do. Okay, she has a podcast called Pretty Big Deal, and I love tuning into her podcast because she interviews people who are a pretty big deal, <laughs> um, and I love hearing the, the, their stories, their background, where they started, where they are, and she always talks about mindset as well, and I get really inspired by her because the way she portrays herself, and she's like an entrepreneur as well, and she's really about empower women empowerment as well, and just being who you are and not being ashamed of who you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just for every, everyone's knowledge, um, she, and correct me if I'm wrong, you, you know this much better, but she's a, <laughs> like a, she's a plus size model, yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. But she's very, very well known and been on all kinds of stuff and, and, you know, big, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. She's a well-known model. Um, she's married, just had a baby um very ambitious woman I just like really look up to her I love being around people like that so okay so maybe maybe one day you will be interviewed on that that podcast <laughs> that would be awesome yes okay Austin we got our work Casual. cut out for us we're gonna we're gonna find a way to get her on that podcast <laughs> yeah I mean I think you've already crested <laughs> the top of the mountain though you're on tycoons of small biz I don't know oh exactly pretty big deal thing I mean Ashley Graham knows who we are so <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> now if we if we can help with that we would we would love to do that and obviously we 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 follow the careers of the of the guests that we have very closely and so you know i, I want to give you an opportunity to talk more about really what you're doing day to day to to drive the business and and this isn't you know in in the inspiration or passion or mindset or you know self-care things but why don't you tell us a little bit more about the product line that's going to be coming out soon? I mean, to, you know, yeah, let absolutely. us, let us, let us let you speak your language for a little bit and just yeah, of course. tell us about that product line. And, and I've already mentioned that Landon's really big into lip gloss too. So you might, you might get a new <laughs> customer here. Oh, good. Even better. <laughs> um, well, as you know, I initially started with a lip gloss collection and so I'm expanding with a full range of color cosmetics. Um, I'm launching my new collections November 30th. I'll be taking pre-orders November 5th, but November 30th is Cyber Monday. So perfect. I'll be having a lot of good deals. And so my brand is a luxury brand, cruelty-free, hypoallergenic, paraben-free, um, and non commodogenic And I specialize with neutral shades. And basically, the colors that I picked and the formulas and everything is going to be, I don't know, it's like I picked all of my favorite colors, to be honest with you. Um, like I love nude colors. I can wear it every day. Like today I'm wearing um, one of my new products and with the lip gloss over it, it's just good, good colors together. And yeah, all the collection names are in Latin. I think it's a beautiful love language and um, it could, it's just a beautiful language. I love Latin. <laughs> and <laughs> so I think one of my favorite names, I'll just tell you, it's called Gratia. It means gratitude. And that's the lip liner collection. I just think gratitude is huge. And then it's empowering. It's important to have gratitude and be thankful for what you have now. And that will help you get to like where you want in life and what you want in life as well. You just have to appreciate what you have now. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Amore, love means love. Um, I just think that's beautiful. 
Yeah, Whoever I, promises I, moments. That's the names of the products. <laughs> no, I think that's really cool. You know, I, I, I mentioned earlier that I've got a 17 year old daughter and I, I have a wife who've been married for 22 years and, and they obviously wear cosmetics and they're both very, very big into, you know, cruelty free, non Me too. Love animals. <laughs> yeah. You said, you said one other term that I, I didn't, I hadn't heard before non commodogenic just clean ingredients basically yeah yeah which I mean I think that that's it's important right I mean I didn't realize obviously because I'm not a cosmetic wearer how how bad it had gotten in a lot of the different cosmetic uh yeah you know cosmetics that are out there and so you know my my wife and daughter have taught me uh, a few things there but I'll tell you you know as a, as a father of a 17 year old, the message that you just gave is probably the most powerful message that I think you can give. Right. And that's that you need to be, you need to be grateful for what it is that you have. You need to be grateful and comfortable in your own skin, whatever that is. Right. Yeah, Nobody. Yeah. No, everybody doesn't look the same, nor should they. And yeah. everybody needs to be comfortable with who they are and, and, and what and they accept look yourself like. for who you are as well. And I think yeah. it's important. Yeah, I agree. So. Yeah. So <laughs> specifically to 17 year old girls, what, what is the biggest message that you would, that you would give to, to them today? Cause I think when you have a cosmetics brand, everybody thinks that you're all about appearance. And we've learned today that you've got way more depth to you than just somebody <laughs> that cares about appearance. Right. So yeah, I'd absolutely. love to hear a message for a 17 year old girl. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say just to show so much gratitude and appreciation for those around you. Life is so short. And I think it's important to just be kind and to be, just be a, I don't know, it sounds so cliche, but just be a good person when you can. Like, you don't know what somebody's going through um, in the way that, like, you just don't know what people are going through. They, they might look like they're okay, but you never know exactly what they're going through in their life. So just be kind and just try to give back to the world, be generous. And because what goes around does come back around and karma is not bad unless you are. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like if you have good intentions in life and just try to show your appreciation for what you have, it will help you in life for sure. Yeah. Get to where you want to be. <laughs> yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And it's, it's a message that's really tough to get through, especially today in this social media world where everybody just shows us their best side, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Nobody's and, posting their, their failures. <laughs> yeah. And I think more and more we should, and I think it's okay, even as business be owners authentic. to, yeah, to be authentic and to say, you know what, I tried this and it didn't work. And this is the lesson that I learned from it. I, I think that's yeah. a lesson that we could all take, you know, I mean, I, uh, last week I grew a beard for a little bit longer than I normally do. And it just got a little scraggly and ugly and it doesn't groom as well as Landon's. And so, you know, I learned that it was time to trim it back and that's what you see today. So we, you know, we all have these, these mess, these, uh, lessons that we learn along the way. Yeah, absolutely. That's a matter of life trial and error. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. So let's get back to the business side a little bit and, and, you mentioned your uncle and I think it might go this direction, but, you know, talk to us specifically about your work ethic, where it comes from. I'm, I'm pretty sure you even said alpaca farms at the beginning. So, you know, let, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's learn about where that comes from. Absolutely. I think it's just something I was born with as well. And just growing up in an entrepreneurship family, like my dad always being hardworking and my mom and dad always like working together, growing their businesses together. Um, I mean, I got my first real job. I mean, I always helped my parents out, like entering data and QuickBooks and just helping them out on job sites or whatever that they needed help with. But I got my first real job when I was 15 and I, at Yogurt Land, uh, frozen awesome. yogurt. I love frozen yogurt, still do. And I became the store manager at 16. And then I was in the dental field for five years after that. And I wanted to be a dentist, but it just wasn't really making me happy. I love the cosmetics cases with before and after seeing somebody like insecure with their smile and then seeing like their after cases, like them so confident and this life changing. I, I love that so much. But I have friends who are dentists and I'm actually going to partner with them as well uh, for my, my lip glosses to be sold at their mm-hmm. practices, cosmetic dentistry. Um, so I'm excited for that collaboration. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. I think that, you know, you've, you've honed in on some things right away. Obviously, you know, there are certain things that we all learn along the way that help us to become who we are. Right. And, and, but I don't know that there are any cosmetic brands out there. Not that I'm an, an expert in any, by any stretch, but I don't think there are any cosmetic brands out there that are partnering with cosmetic dentists specifically yeah. to distribute their products. So I think that that's a very smart thing to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it for sure. And I mean, I always will have so much appreciation for the dental field. It will have a special part of me because I was in the field for five years and I really thought I saw myself maybe owning my own dental practice one day, but one day I'll, I would love to invest in different dental offices because I love it so much. Like I, I appreciate such hard work that it takes to be a dentist <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I loved it um, for the time being and I just saw my life going a different direction. Um, I became a manager. I was like lead dental assistant. Um, I, I did so much in the dental field, like full variety, full range. Like I, I feel like I'm well knowledgeable with dentistry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, what about um, habits, right? So let me, before we jump into my question here, um, one of the things, and I actually have my business coach that I had a phone call with this morning, and we were talking about the importance of habits specifically and, and the, the habits that I have or really the things that I do day in and day out that are almost sacred to me, right? And, yeah. and I shared with them the way that I, that I calendar those things into my day because that's the best way to form a habit and that's the best way to, to make sure that things get done, of course. But Absolutely. it's really that, that that dictates how important it is to us, right? And so yeah. for me personally, I have a list of five or six things that I do every single morning before I get involved with work. One of them's exercise. You know, one of them is walking my dog with my wife. One of them is studying the gospel topics that are important. So you mentioned spirituality for me, it's, you know, really? scriptural type stuff that I'll, that I'll study and, and a few other things, but they're, they're calendared in there. And I specifically don't schedule meetings with clients or anybody else until about 10 AM because I have those personal things that I take care of. And then there are a couple of business things that I work on whether it's studying something, a, a topic specifically, or doing some prep work or whatever to make me better at what I do before I jump into my day. So that's how I okay. handle my habits. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, the importance of having habits and certain things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I think it's important to have, to take time out of the day for yourself. Life can get hectic, as I like to call it. Um, with work or phone calls, Zoom meetings, um, just errands, tasks that you have to do. So I think it's important that you take at least, or delegate at least an hour to yourself, whether I think morning routine is huge, so I can relate to you. I think, I mean, every morning, it, whether it's exercise or with affirmation, setting your intention for the day, um, eating a healthy, small breakfast, or um, taking my pup for a walk. I have a mini golden doodle. Um, he's so cute. I have a golden doodle. <laughs> so do oh, I. I have a mini one. He's yeah. really, oh my gosh, I love it. We'll have to have a puppy play date. <laughs> um, a virtual puppy play date. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> so cute. Um, and I just think it's important, like everyone is unique and has certain things that they, that make them happy, whether it's reading a book, whether it's going on a walk, going to the gym, um, listening to your favorite song. Like it could be like a variety of things. So I think it's important that you spend time to yourself a day and that's a good habit to have. And I think manifesting is huge as well. Like I created a vision board like every year and I like to look at it often and say, oh, these are my goals. I think it keeps me grounded. Um, I'm spiritual. I grew up Christian. I'm not necessarily a Christian, but I love God now and I have a strong relationship with God I pray every day um, whether it's for someone or whether it's for myself whatever it is I think that's important and I stay true to that I've seen changes in my life when I pray daily and I love listening to podcasts like at least one a day like I love it like Ashley Graham for sure 
Um, I think, you know, there's this one podcast called uh, Tycoon. I think it's my new favorite podcast. Yeah. I'll have to start listening to that every day now as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's anything a good that one. can inspire me and expand <laughs> my mindset. So, <laughs> yeah. No, that that's awesome. So, uh, there are a couple of things that came out of that that I want to make sure we hit after the break, but let's take a quick break and, and hear from our sponsor. And then we'll, we've got some more questions for you about uh, you know, what the future looks like, who you surround yourself with and, yeah. and uh, certain things that are important to you. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. All right, welcome back, Tycoons. We are here today with Janae Marie, and we are talking about her cosmetics brand, but we're really talking more about what's important to her and what drives her each day. So we're we're excited to have you for the for the back part of this, and uh, I'm going to let Landon jump in and ask you a few questions about uh, where we go from here. Awesome. Yeah. So I want to mention something. You got you mentioned a podcast. Um, I don't know if you ever listened to books on tape. Uh, you know, Audible. I have a subscription to Audible, and um, I just started looking listening to a new book on tape. It's by um, Stephen Schwartzman. He is the co-founder and the CEO of Blackstone, which is the one of the largest companies in in the world. I think they, I, I think he said they they employ um, more than five hundred thousand people, and they've got a half a trillion dollars in assets. They're they're like an investment firm. They buy and sell businesses and. Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm only about an hour into his story, but um, so far it's great. I'll have to really, look really into great. It. So yeah, it's in the, it's the book is called "What It Takes." Okay. So check that out. I'll have to add that to my list. I love uh, self improvement books, or I love listening to their story. Um, there's a podcast I also listen to um, about Starbucks, how they started, and I kind of want to listen to that one again soon. I, I love, nice. I love nice. showing that their story, where they started, where they're at now, their goals, and it just inspires me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that he that he talks a lot about is um, uh, the importance of the people that you surround yourself with. So you've kind yeah. of you've kind of it mentioned make that. or break you. <laughs> What's that? It could either make or break you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Um, Talk to us a little bit about that. It sounds like that's something that has really helped contribute to who you are, but also where you are in your business. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I personally like to be around people that inspire me, either have good vibes, good energy, um, ambitious, go-getters, um, good intentions, good-hearted people. And I feel when I'm surrounded by that, it helps me grow. And when they are just eager to just get up for the day and conquer the day, um, it gets me excited and we just empower each other. And, um, but yeah, you have to have people in your life that inspire you, support you, believe in you. Um, nobody needs a devil's advocate in their life. I mean, it's good to have a reality check and know where you're at, but I only take, I love to take advice from people who inspire me and who, I know have good intentions for my life. And I just think it's important to surround yourself with people that genuinely want the best for you. And sometimes that could be hard to make judgment, but it's got to do what your gut feels is right. And um, know how you feel when you're around certain people and after a conversation or an interaction, just know how you feel when you're like, I want people to feel empowered when they talk to me. I want to be able to inspire and empower the people and I love to have that in return so yeah yeah absolutely so are you um so I'm gathering that you you do a lot of um you know networking for lack of a better term or you know collaboration um you know sharing of the minds so do you do this on like a formal basis you know are you part of any 
you know, CEO, you know, peer groups or networking groups or anything like that? Or is this just strictly the, the network that you, you surround yourself with? I'm not part of any groups at the moment. Um, I'd say every relation that or connection that I have, it's either through a friend of a friend or um, I'm just kind of building my network myself. So, which I have a great network of people, great, great connections. I'm so, I'm so thankful for all the people that I have in my life right now. And I'm excited to grow and I'm excited to build from it. Yeah. So speaking of growing and building earlier, you mentioned that you have a vision board yes. and for, uh, I've never done a vision board. Actually. I, I mean, I've heard of them many times, but for any of our listeners that don't know, a vision board is essentially a, uh, a, a, a piece of, uh, paper or a wall or something where you physically put together a collection of images words, things that inspire you, right? And then you kind of reference that to give you motivation and inspiration, right? Am I? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I feel manifestation is is super huge and like the power of your thoughts and your intentions in life. And my vision board, um, yeah, it has just like my goals and different aspects of my life. Like you can do like the five Fs. Um, there's, there's different aspects of your life, whether it's faith, financial, fitness, um, travel, like there, there's so many different, like, or finance, like there's so many different aspects and then you just add certain goals to each one and then you keep looking at it and it just like, what can you do today to get to that goal? That's, yeah. that's what I do. So can you, <laughs> I've seen can, great. you sh- can you share with us one uh, kind of goal that you have on the personal side and then maybe share with us uh, a goal that you've got on the business side? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. So maybe personal uh, for fitness, um, I want to work out maybe three or four times a week. So I have a calendar, a race, a race board, and I have it set like for the week. And then so I say, oh, I'm going to do this exercise this day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, or do stretching. It just kind of depends. Um, so that's personal. And then um, for business, I, I'm just excited to get my products into distribution. So I'm exploring off. Um, opportunities and seeing what would fit best for that so that's that's a goal for me and I'm excited for it and just to build build launch more products like next year I'm going to start modeling for my brand and I'm going to be launching some exciting products I'm I'm really excited about so once I launch those get into distribution build from there excited for it cool can you give us a little uh a little hint maybe around uh, what kind of new <laughs> products that we can expect coming from you next year? Yes, eye products. Eye products, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and applicator products. <laughs> Uh, what is that? <laughs> that, that, that sounds like, like that brushes. sounds, yeah, that sounds like the mascara that, uh, that I may or may not have worn in the 1990s in my punk rock band. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But yeah, like makeup brushes um, and just eye products, whether it's eyeliner, um, eyeshadows. I, I can just, I'll just say what I'm excited for because there's going to be a variety. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll keep we'll keep an eye out for those. Um, so I I'm curious. Um, I would love to hear more about um, the journey of getting your product into distribution, because I'm sure that has not been an easy one. And there's probably been some bumps in the roads and some challenges oh, absolutely. And, and some successes. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, just from, from, from A to A to, to where you are today, just talk to us about what that process has kind of looked like for you. It's basically having pitch zoom calls and showing getting your product out there um and just zoom calls talk like your connections and um it's exploring options there's so many different great retail stores and distribution that i'm exploring um whether it's Saks Fifth avenue or neiman marcus um different sephoras i'm just exploring the opportunities right now um 
ideally I would like to have it in Saks Avenue, I believe, but there's, there's so many different options that I'm exploring. So, and it just kind of depends on if it will be a good fit, um, different stores, how, how many stores, the quantity units, um, and keeping up with making sure that I have a good relationship with the manufacturers and have a good solid system that I feel confident with, um, to keep up with the supply for the demand and just making sure my inventory is being maintained. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, that's a hard part of, of the business, right? I mean, I, I think that the early stages specifically when you're trying to get your product distributed somewhere in, in different retail outlets, you know, it, it's really about getting your foot in the door, but then Absolutely. once, yeah, but once you get your foot in the door, you have to keep your foot in that door by obviously your product selling, but you living up to what you told them you could do. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Making sure you can deliver the expectations and absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you've obviously been on a, a pretty long journey to this point and you've got a long journey ahead of you. And I think that you'll, Super you'll find for that. It. Yeah. I, I have no doubt that you will find success in, in everything that you're setting out to do. I think what you've shown us today is that um, passion is super important, but yes. you're deeper than just being passionate about something. You understand what it is that you're trying to do and your past history tells us that you're going to figure out a way to get it done regardless of what comes, <laughs> you know, so that that's exciting. Definitely. So I, I've got one final question for you and then we'll give you a chance to, to give, you know, your website address, social media channels, all those sorts of things where, where people yeah, can, can find you. Um, but the last question that I'm going to give you uh, the opportunity to answer is, you know, you talk about the importance of surrounding yourself and, you know, with the right people and networking and those sorts of things. So who would you say is the one or two people in your life that have been the biggest supporters for you and continue to be the biggest supporter for you going forward and why? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I have so many great people in my life. Um, I'd say my family in general, they're super great support system and, um, my business consultant, like she's awesome. Um, she's, I feel like she genuinely wants the best for me. I love our conversation. She inspires me and same with my uncle. I love talking to him and he expands my mindset and super supportive. Um, always tells me that my dreams are never too big. Don't ever tell, let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, and like, I don't know, my mom and dad, they're so cute. Like they're super supportive. And my sister, like they just like want to see me grow. And it's just, it's just cute. Like they're my number one fans and um, it's cute. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> they believe in me. And I think that's important. No, it, it's, it's a warm feeling knowing that people like support, love and believe in you. It's just a good feeling to have. And I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that internal drive to succeed is probably number one, but it's pretty hard to discount what other people around us do to help us make that successful. Right. I mean, yes, absolutely. I'm older than you. You don't, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that based on what you can <laughs> see on the screen. Right. Um, so I've been, I've been doing this for about 20 years and my internal drive is super important, right? I have a, I have a drive to succeed, that, but it comes yeah. from the experiences that I've had throughout my life and the way that I was raised. That's where the internal yeah. drive comes from. But my, my focus is around being successful and being balanced for my family, for my wife and for my kids who count on me, right? And, and, yeah. and they are my biggest fans. They are my biggest supporters, but they also count on me to be the guy who puts the roof over their head and, yes. you know, provides food and shelter and provider, all those sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. So I, you know, it's important to have those types of people in our lives, who, whoever they are, it doesn't have to be kids. It doesn't have to be a spouse, it you know, whoever it is, but I think having those supporters are, are super important. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Well, it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure for me. And I know Landon feels the same way. We'd, we'd love to, to have you come back in the future and 
you know, when we, when we see your brand everywhere at Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus, yeah. and, you know, everywhere else that we shop, I think it'd be, yeah, it'd be awesome to have you, have you back on and talk about how it was to be on Ashley Graham's podcast and, you know. <laughs> okay. That would be it, amazing. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> how it paled in comparison to being on Tycoons of Small Biz, but it was still a lot of fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So just just give the audience uh, an opportunity to know how to get a hold of you. You know, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever it is, website, yeah. and um, that'll be yeah. awesome. Yeah, um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, all my all Z H O N N A E and Cosmetics dot com. So it's pretty straightforward. If you know how to spell my first name, um, the brand name, then it's pretty easy to find everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, spelling that first name is the hard part, but if you can get that yeah. figured out, then, then it'll be yeah. easy to find. Exactly. <laughs> I, well, I've got awesome. one, one question before we, before we let you go. Okay. Um, you know, a big part of the work that Austin and I do is we help um, business owners when they are um, either starting to get into the mindset of, or are ready to transfer out of their business. So whether it's a, a sale to an outside party, transition to managers, whatever the case may be, we help to expose them to all those different um, pathways and then help them plan and then execute it. So have you thought about that? I know you're in the early stages of your, of yeah. your business, but have you thought about, you know, what, what's the end goal for your, for your business and, you know, call it, you know, 10 years? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'd love to delegate tasks and um, build a great team. That's definitely something I'm interested in. So gotcha. uh, your answer is absolutely hundred <laughs> percent. Fantastic. Well, again, yeah, I'll just echo uh, Austin's comments. Um, really enjoyed having you on the show. Appreciate you making the time to join us and uh, excited to follow your uh, journey here the next couple of years. So we uh, look forward to having you again on maybe, uh, you know, uh, middle later part of next year. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you guys so much for having me. And I'm excited to be a guest again in the future. All right. You're welcome. Thanks, Janae. Right. Thank you. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform. I'm going to go ahead and say we're clear. Oh, there we go. We are. <laughs> yep, we're, we're clear. Well done. I'm going to stay off video so I can take a couple of photos for you, but that was wonderful. Janae, thank you so much for awesome. being a guest. It'll yeah, be absolutely. Fun. Thanks for having me. It'll be fun to have you back and give a, you know, a, here's what's been happening since with all the great locations uh, that you're going to be promoting your products in. A lot of fun. I had a chance yeah. to peek at your website and a couple of things there that you, you are destined for success for sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'm super excited for it. Yeah. So if you can all just smile into your uh, phones and laptops for a couple of moments here, let me do a couple of screenshots, please. Go ahead and smile now. And one more. Awesome. All right, gang, uh, I'll let you guys say goodbye. I'll stay off. Uh, let me go ahead and shut off the recording. Uh, okay. Janae, in a couple of days, we will have...